It's probably been about two years since I did my last video, and it's been a little over two years since I woke up. Back then I thought I knew it all. I thought I understood everything I needed to understand about enlightenment. Um, and I don't even like calling it enlightenment anymore. There's how dramatic the change has been over these last two years. So for those of you who don't follow my blog, who just follow the videos, I kind of wanted to explain a little bit about why my message has been so different, it is so different now. Um, in 2010, I guess you would say is that, well, what happens is after your personal self falls away, not all the conditioning does. You're, you still have like these knots in a stream of consciousness, then, and these knots influence you, and they're based on your past, uh, your, your life and everything. They've, it's a lifetime of conditioning. But they're very subtle sometimes. And one of the most powerful ones that I've just recently started to discover is that the knot of ambition, of self-survival, self-sufficiency, whatever, that, that, that looking out for the individual is a strong one. And it's not readily apparent that it is influencing your actions. What happened in 2010, a few months after I woke up, I was trying to think, to, and again, it's kind of unconscious. I was thinking, how can I use this enlightenment to make a living at it? Uh, how can I teach? I wanted to teach, I want to share, but probably the primary motive was to make a living. You know, and that's kind of selfish. It is selfish. But you don't realize this. You think, well, I'm being you know, altruistic, I'm sharing it and everything. But I look at my notes and I see all these different ways of marketing this web, my website and uh, teachings and whatnot. Um, and so what happened in 2010 was that my entire life just fell apart. <laughs> and it's really funny, it's just, it, it just, everything I would try to do would go wrong. I had bought this uh, neat uh, Isuzu box truck and to make it into a stealth camper so I could travel around the country and stuff with and being able to stay wherever I wanted and everything went wrong with that camper uh, just everything I would try to do would go wrong in 2011 last year this is right now it is January 2012 in 2011 I found out my mother was sick with cancer and I gave everything else up I stopped living selfishly even though I didn't realize that's what I was doing. And I just gave myself over to the family, helping the family out. And I ended up helping uh, her with her surgery, you know, getting through the surgery, and I helped my sister move, and I helped my parents eventually move. Um, but all of 2011 was given to others. And all of 2011 went smooth as silk. Life would just line up for me. Everything worked out. Nothing got in my way. It was beautiful. And what I was noticing is these patterns. What happens is that after you wake up, when you try to do things for yourself, when you try to, and again, it's conditioning, it's not necessarily conscious. When it's self-centered actions, life gets in your way. This has became a consistent pattern. Constantly would get in my way. When they were selfless actions, life would line up people get out of my way. Things would just happen perfectly. And you know, on my blog I, I, I made a category. It was happening so often I called it synchronicities. All these different magical events that were happening when life was lining up. And just recently I made a new category called evidence. And what I mean by evidence is that synchronicity implies an omnipotent intelligence who cares and can control things in your life. An omnipotent, omniscient power. You could call it God. I call it her. And there was no denying this. And so I was gradually my understanding of life without a personal self was realizing that there is this 
divine love intelligence that moves through everything, tries to move through you if you don't block her. And that it implies God, you know. So, whereas with traditional enlightenment, or the way I was kind of going down is I was focusing on the emptiness of enlightenment, where now as a mystic who sees God in everything, I focus on the fullness aspect. And so, this video is kind of to explain that two-year period of what, what, where I was and what was happening to me, but also to explain why my focus on what I talk about now is so much on the fullness and so much on the mystical aspect, and so much on the divine, God, what I call her. And I'll make other videos explaining that a little bit more, explaining what I mean by her and what it means to be a mystic versus a more... Uh, a radical non-dualist enlightenment, uh, the, the emptiness type of focus. Both of them are probably pointing in the same direction, probably in the same area. It's just that I don't know how the more radical non-dualists cannot see her, <laughs> you know? So anyway, um, I'll do more videos soon. I just want to kind of keep you up on that. Thanks.